We welcome you to the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex for this week's edition of the Labatt Coaches. So my name is Dylan Clark, joined as always by head coach of the Thunderbirds, Garrett Rutledge. Coach, how are we doing this week? Got some rest under our belts, right? We're doing great, yeah. Lots of rest. Not much hockey this weekend for us. A lot of hockey on the horizon, though. Uh, three games this upcoming weekend against the Port Huron Prowlers and then a, a lengthy road trip on the other side of that. But but before we get into that, what uh, what kind of stuff did you do to get away uh, get away from the game this weekend? Oh, not much. Just kind of hung around, played some golf, the usual. Um, still watched hockey. I still came into the rink and stuff. So I was still uh, doing hockey stuff. So never stops. Did you go up to uh, Maple Chase? I know that's where a lot of the guys shoot. Uh, no, I actually didn't. I went to a different course in town here, so it was good though. Shot a quick round and uh, got to relax a little bit golfing. Did you just shoot like by yourself, or did you go with? Yeah, I actually, just shot by myself. So okay. it was all right. So. I, I was because I, I was talking to I was talking to a couple of people about that, and, and a lot of I mean, when I went with my friends in school, like we'd always go together. Yeah. And, and so my, my buddy was saying that it's just it's so much harder when he goes by himself because it's just you, you you've got nothing else. Like you have to focus on on the, the actual golf and when it's not going well you, you, you kind of fixate on that and I golf way better when I'm by <laughs> myself so just put my ear pods in and no distractions you no know, no distractions hit a couple balls and it's good that's uh guess how you get better right what were you listening to uh, I was just a podcast just oh, I got you I got you so into this weekend and I guess uh over the past weekend no games um but Port here on this weekend and it's a team that's in a, a pretty similar spot uh, to your group right now, four, five, one, and one, uh, an overtime win and an overtime loss through 11 games played, uh, but kind of trending in a different direction. Uh, Thunderbirds got points in all three games last weekend. The Prowlers are on a bit of a slide, uh, having lost two in a row. Does that kind of uh, influence how you view them coming into this game? As you're in the same spot, but coming at it from different directions. Yeah, I think always teams are always going to be hungry once they've lost a couple games, so they're going to want to. Want to get back in the win column, definitely playing at home. So, again, it's a big weekend for both teams, really, because, like, if you put three wins together, you can really uh, separate yourself. And then uh, with that turnaround uh, Friday and Saturday night coming back here, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what team's ready to go and what team's focused and the condition is going to come into it. And it, it's interesting, again, uh, three-point system uh, in this league as opposed to two points per game, you know, it, it allows for more movement. Um, on a, a daily or, or, or a weekend basis. Uh, but we've noticed, you know, as the season moves along and teams get more games under their belt, it, it's, it gets tougher and tougher to move up the standings, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But it's one of those things. It's like those three points. It seems like you string some wins together and you stay consistent. You can, you can move up the uh, standings pretty quick. So it's one of those things. It's just uh, we worry about ourselves again and, and just putting points up and scoring goals and winning hockey games. Do you – Having now uh, over a week uh, and some change between uh, yourself and uh, the last weekend against Danbury, do you view it any differently, having some time to think and look back on it more, or is it kind of still the same, uh, the same spot in your mind? Same spot, but it's just, just you're onto the new group and the new uh, team you're going to be playing against. So obviously there's things we want to clean up with our game, our defensive zone and stuff, and worrying about the Carolina Thunderbirds and coming ready to play this weekend and uh, checking off the boxes and making sure we come out of the gate hot here. So like I said, a lot of power play work, a lot of penalty kill, a lot of defensive zone stuff, and uh, just building, keep building week by week here and making the team better. What, what kind of stands out to you the most uh, about the Prowlers um, from an on-paper uh, point of view, they, they're right from top to bottom. They're a pretty, pretty like I wouldn't say stack team, but they're they're a pretty good team. Like from top to bottom, there's no holes in their game. Um, they got some guys that can hurt you and stuff. So we got to be aware. They like to score off the rush and stuff. So it's uh, one of those teams that you definitely got to take seriously and you got to and uh, play the right way out there, or else they can hurt you in a real quick fashion on it, the scoreboard. Is that something that? you've noticed a bit more um, in this league as opposed to other levels of hockey that there is more of an, of an opportunity to, to score off the rush or, or more teams do try to score off the rush? No, it's one of those things. The higher levels you go up, each level you go up, basically any type of pro hockey or junior hockey level, like guys can score off the rush here. They can, they can shoot the puck. Everybody's creative and stuff. So when you get an odd man rush or you get an opportunity, guys generally don't miss. So um, you got to limit those chances and play the right way. So with um, – we talked about some of the, the, the personnel changes. Um, again, Nick Modica is still obviously out um, battling that lower body injury. Um, but uh, a, a player that's been brought into the lineup or, or that will join the team in Port Huron, uh, a familiar face, Evan Morrison, yep. goaltender, will join uh, the, the Thunderbirds for this weekend's trip to Port Huron. Um, someone you've known for a while now going back to your time in, uh, in Flint. 
Yeah, he's actually another Mo, so it's, it works out good. So um, Evan's a great kid. Again, he, he plays a lot like Chris Paulin. Um, I got a lot of confidence in him. The kid just, uh, he came to work and in Flint and stuff. He was kind of our third goalie there. He flip-flopped back and forth. But he's always got a good attitude, and he, whenever he gets the opportunity to get in the net, he's always battling in there. And he's going to be fun to watch. And, and uh, it's comforting to have him show up this week, and then he's going to join us probably for the next couple weeks, to be honest with you. Um, so it's good to have him there and uh, can uh, help Polly. Was, was he the first name that, uh, that kind of popped into your mind when, uh, when you looked at the schedule and said, okay, we're going to be off to Port Huron and, and, and we're going to need a goaltender? Yeah, definitely. That's one asset of being in Port Huron. I know a lot of guys in Canada and stuff, and immediately he came to mind. Actually, we've always stayed in contact. So, like I said, he was uh, over the moon happy to, to join us and get the opportunity. So, uh, I love kids that, want, that are hungry for that opportunity and to get the net. What, what kind of stood out to you most about, you know, it, it's been a while since you've seen him play. Um, I, I know you, you said he, he played a lot like Chris Paulin, but what, what, the number one thing that kind of stood out about his game those years ago in, uh, in Flint? He's always battling. He's always happy-go-lucky kid in the net. And like I said, you put him in there, and, and he gives us a chance to win every night. So he's explosive in the net. Like, he's always, he's always battling. Like, he's always around the puck. The pucks seem to hit him, with, which is a good thing for a goalie, obviously. But like I said, he's one of those guys that he doesn't dwell on the small things. He, he's always building for the next save. So... It's uh, the work he's put in over the years has been great, and it's a credit to where he is now. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, uh, hear from some of our sponsors, and we'll be back with more of the Labatt Coaches Show after this. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist helps you do more of the things you love. More laughs, more adventures, more hugs. We combine the brightest minds in medicine to bring you world-class care with a commitment to strengthen the health and wellness of our community. Because when it comes to the health of you and your family, no one should settle for anything short of life-changing. Welcome back to the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex for the Labatt Coaches Show. Dylan Clark with Garrett Rutledge. Coach, uh, Port Huron coming up this weekend. They're coming off of back-to-back uh, -back losses against the Columbus River Dragons, a, a team that you're pretty familiar with. Um, recently, they played the first uh, of three neutral site games in Biloxi. The Prowlers actually won that game. Um, so these three teams, uh, the Thunderbirds, Prowlers, uh, and River Dragons all kind of tied together. Going to be going through that to the Biloxi neutral site circuit in the next coming weeks uh, in the month of December here. Um, is that a game that, that you kind of have circled on the calendar? On the 17th, uh, you go down to play uh, the River Dragons after this weekend against Port Huron? Yeah, they're all big games, really, but going down to Biloxi, it should be interesting. Like I said, I've heard them talk about the ice conditions a little bit, so it's always one of those things, going to a warm climate I guess I've never really been down to uh, Biloxi area so it'll be a first for me but I'm excited um, obviously they're big games they're always big against the River Dragons so and uh, anytime we get a chance to go to a new city I guess and I guess grow the game is is great so I heard they got a couple good crowds so I'm excited to get down there and uh, see what type of hockey fans there are. I've been told the arena is literally right next to the beach um, does that does that change the pregame routine for you at all? Um, yeah, I've actually never walked on the beach before the game, but maybe uh, maybe we'll uh, change that up. So it should be uh, should be fun. Like I said, I'm sure we'll get creative with it. Maybe the guys will have a game of sewer on the beach or something like that, or something uh, something where it's a little bit different and change it up a bit. So it uh, it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. So hopefully it's in the good to call them. So no, I'm excited to get there and I'm excited to see the facility. And it mentioned you mentioned sewer ball, and that reminds me before I think it was before the last road trip um, to Columbus in the arena before we left. Um, the, the guys pretty much made up their own new version of sewer ball. Uh, it was this weird hybrid of like sewer ball and then, oh, I, what, like tennis? Because they, they set up one of the barriers in between is like that. Do you remember watching that? Uh, not really. But oh, really? Yeah, I've seen them doing it, but I didn't really pay much attention. Oh, that was, I say, I just, that was, that was brand new to me. And I just, I thought that was interesting. I it just you should get involved, get out there and do it. Get, get out there. Well, see, I don't want to embarrass myself. That's, I, I feel like right Maybe away. You could be a win. You could be the win. You could get the win. And then next thing you know, you're the sewer champion. So just take the gamble next time. Possibly. Would you get ever get involved on whatever, no. whatever that game would be? No, no, I'm not there to play sewer. So well, that's, All right. that's one of those, it's one of those things. That's fair. So maybe, well, who knows, maybe we'll take a barrier out on the beach when we, when we get maybe. down to Biloxi. That's right. Um, but getting back, uh, get, getting back into this weekend and, and taking a look at, at some of the players, uh, John Batit has been one of the more um, 
offensively productive players over the last stretch of games and at a consistent clip. Um, Three-game scoring streak, it was snapped uh, last Saturday against the Hat Tricks, but Batid has been a player um, that's kind of brought some consistency to the table, both on and off the ice. You know, he wears the A. Um, just what can you say about what he's brought um, in terms of, of a leadership role in this Bootsy's team? Bootsy's just his leadership right from the get-go. He takes control of the room. He's well-respected throughout the league and his peers and all his opponents, basically. So you see a lot of the times he's, he's just – he's got such a good attitude. He's one of the hardest workers I've been around in hockey, so you can tell by the conditioning he's in. And like I said, he was a little bit snake bitten at the beginning of the year. But he stayed with it, stayed positive, and finally got a couple to go. I think he credits it to his uh, visor change, I think, is why he started <laughs> scoring goals. So um, sometimes you see guys changing up their style a bit, so it looks pretty funny. But I embrace it, and, and like I said, uh, hopefully he keeps building. And, and Bootsy's one of those guys that he just he's going to have success wherever he goes and what he does in life. He's just such a hard worker and such a professional what he does. How would you describe the new visor? I, I don't even know what to call it. It's not even new. It's like... 2002 well, called, and they wanted it back. <laughs> it covers like 60% of his face. It's not, it's not like a half shoot. Well, it's not like a bubble. But oh, yeah. Guys I, are all over him on the ice about it, too, so it's pretty funny. I think they're kind of jealous about it. I don't even know where he found it, but it reminds me of like, I don't know, like early, late 90s, early 2000s, like Ontario Hockey League, great big eye tech visor. So it's pretty funny, but, hey, safety first. So if Bootsy's – safe and that's what he likes wearing so be it keep it going plus and you know if the goals come with it that's why right. not why not right absolutely and uh, batita uh one of a handful of players that spent the uh the off weekend uh, actually up in the sphl um with with faithville and, and some of the teams up there um and just for those guys again an interesting situation seven teams in the league this year that means someone's always going to be without a dance partner we're going to have this kind of rotating set uh, of bye weeks as the year goes on um, to see your players kind of take that initiative and and stay in in hockey shape uh, over the weekend um, when they have a chance to, to, to get some rest but instead saying no I, I want to get I want to get better and I want to improve myself what, what does that say about the group that you have oh it's great to see our guys go up and have success in the Southern Pro League and then uh, get a nice time and stuff and playing at the level that they do um so like it's a credit to them like our group works hard and, and they enjoy the game it shows you how much they love the game of hockey so it's fun to watch them have success at our level and and when they go up to the southern pro which is great and it's uh works for both teams so it's uh like i said it's i don't know it's one of those things and i wish them nothing but the best and when they come back here it only makes for better hockey and uh, Brian Moore, one of those players, has been experiencing a ton of success uh, both here in the FPHL and up in the SPHL. Um, dazzling overtime winner, to, to say the least. Well, he set up a dazzling overtime winner. Yeah, I'd say it was uh, – Morsey's got game-breaking skill. Like, that's why he's played at such a high level he has. So it's fun to have him here and have part of the Thunderbirds. So hopefully when he does come back, he can uh, – bring some of that magic back with him and uh, that compete level that he has. So he's a fun guy to have around. And like I said, uh, I'm sure the fans love to see him on the ice when he's here. And uh, it's nothing but uh, beneficial for us. One more uh, quick breakout. Another word from our sponsors here. We'll be back on the other side of it with more of the Labatt Coaches Show. A lot has changed since 1933. But one thing that hasn't is modern automotive's commitment to you. North Carolina car buyers have trusted Modern for 85 years for affordable prices, big selection, and an everlasting commitment to local schools, youth programs, and charitable organizations. It has been our pleasure to earn your business and help make a difference in our community. Experience the modern difference. Family owned since 1933. Welcome back to the Labatt Coaches Show. Dylan Clark with head coach of the Thunderbirds, Garrett Rutledge. Uh, coach, again, two games up in port here on this weekend before... Uh, we come back here to the fairgrounds annex to, to play that third game against the prowlers it's uh an area of the country where you spent a lot of time uh grew up around there um, a lot of ties to the hockey community and uh, the community in general up there uh, does this kind of feel like a, a homecoming to you yeah absolutely a lot of friends are coming to the game my family's coming so it should be uh should be fun to have them there michigan's such a good hockey state too like there's so much hockey that goes on in the state of Michigan. you got the Red Wings from the Michigan Wolverines, the Michigan State, Western Michigan, Grand Rapids, the American League team. And then you have Flint Firebirds, Saginaw Spirit, and the Port Huron Prowlers. And so there's so much hockey going on. And, like, like everything everything to do there is hockey, hockey, hockey. So it'll be fun to get back up there, kind of see the cold weather. I know they got some snow 
up there. So it'll be fun to be back. And like I said, it was an arena that I grew up playing in uh, in my minor hockey days. So uh, we played Silver Stick back in the day in McMoran Arena. So it'll be fun to see uh, the transformation of new seats and what they've done. And so it's kind of come full circle for me. So when, when was the last time you played there? Oh, uh, God. It's probably when I've probably been about 10, 12 years old. So I'm 40 now, so you can do the math on that. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. But like I said, uh, it's kind of one of those things full circle now. I'm coaching a professional hockey team, the Carolina Thunderbirds. So it's uh, going to be exciting. And I'm sure my parents are going to enjoy watching it just because they used to drive me to, to bring me to hockey there. So it's, uh, I do remember it was a cold arena. So I can't wait to get there. Will this be the first time? Are your parents coming to the game? Yeah. This will be yeah. the first time that they've gotten to see you yeah. coach uh, yeah, at so FPHL team? Just with all the COVID stuff, finally the borders kind of opened up and stuff has allowed them to travel a bit. So I'm excited to have them, and uh, a few friends are coming in too, so it's going to be good. And, uh, you know, obviously you said, talking about um, your parents driving you to hockey all these years ago, um, this is kind of the case for, I think, for most people that, that get involved in the sport. But, you know, how much of an impact did they have getting you into the game and, and really making it such a huge oh, part of your life? Baseball, hockey, and all the other sports that I played, our parents always drove, all of us pretty much, there was always kids in the vehicle with us. And we were one of those households that always, all the guys were always at my place. So um, they've been huge. Like I said, they got me into sports. They've played sports all their lives. So it's been good. And their support over the years obviously doesn't go unnoticed. And and like I said, I can't thank them enough for get, keeping me in the game. Oh, is that th them playing sports? Was that kind of the first thing that kind of inched you towards uh, getting into it as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, like I said, we're kind of an athletic family. So, it's uh, – and sports is a big deal to us. So, um, I don't know. It's kind of one of those things that it took off. And they put me in hockey and baseball and just embraced it and, and then played pretty much my whole life. It, so, Flint, the Port Huron, Saginaw, all – Kind of right in close there. Um, going back to your uh, your OHL days um, when you got started there um, with the Firebirds, um, eighteen nineteen. Again, uh, Evan Morrison, a, a member of that team. Uh, when you look back to those days, and, and you were in a different role with that team uh, than you are here with the Thunderbirds. But w when you look back, how have you kind of changed um, as a coach and as just as a hockey mind um, since then? Well, it, it comes down to just really it's the, it's the same at every level. Like even this level to the OHL level to whatever team you're coaching, at the end of the day they're all kids and they all love the game of hockey. So it's what you put into the game and stuff, your passion and stuff. People see that how much you, you're invested in the guys and how much you love being around the boys and stuff and, and trying to teach the game to them. So it doesn't matter what level they're at. Um, being in Flint was great. Like I got an opportunity with Ryan Ulihan and Darcy Finley. And a good buddy of mine, Dom Hennig, he was the media relations and the play-by-play -play guy there. So it was great to be able to get to that program. And, and every program is a little bit different in how they do things. So you keep an open mind. You stay in your lane. You work hard. And it's great to be on the ice with those type of players every day. Like, I think I got three or four guys that's touched the ice in NHL now and American League and stuff like that. So always staying in contact with them and seeing their success over the years is, is great and, like, being part of it and then – like when I was in Saginaw, it was a totally different atmosphere around there from uh, just a culture. They had a lot of a lot of success winning and stuff. Chris Lazary, Dave Drinkle, Brandon Bordeaux, he's one of the owners there. Um, they're just amazing people to be around. Jesse Messier, like everybody that I've been touched by, by in Flint and Saginaw has been nothing but amazing. And, and to be able to take all their ideas and, and pick up what you learn from the games, great. Was it kind of a, a, a difficult transition um, going from Flint to Saginaw? Not really. The only one big thing, like in Flint, we, we, had, a, we had a rough season that year, which taught me a lot about what, what like the ups and downs of hockey and stuff. So I think we won 14 games of 68 that year. So we were in one a bit, but it was definitely built character, how to develop hockey players and, and keep it to the grind, keep it fun for the guys, make sure they're enjoying coming to the rink and stuff. And then when I went to Saginaw, they had a very successful year that year that uh, the year before that I came to Saginaw. So I think they lost in the conference final to Guelph. But and then going there and and joining their swagger, kind of their their mentality of uh, we're the best kind of mentality. Guys like Cole Perfetti, Cole Koski, Damian Giroux, and Bodie Wild, and these guys are in the NHL and American Hockey League and stuff. So it's fun to be there and uh, watch their preparation to be able to take what I learned from Flint, kind of the rough, tough days when you lose a hockey game or you have a bad weekend, that the sun's always going to come up the next time or uh, next day. So 
And then, uh, yeah, just being in Saginaw, their uh, offensive and their work ethic there is, uh, doesn't go unnoticed, and that's why they're successful. Would you say that, you know, difficult as it was uh, that, that season in Flint, that that really was kind of your trial by fire and for, forged you kind of yeah, you as a coach? It, it, it's tough to get up every single morning and be on the ice every day and uh, when you're losing just about every game. So credit to the players we had. Like I said, another another good group of kids that kept working. We didn't have anybody that quit. So And uh, like I said, in the last couple of years, I've had success. So those guys have molded that franchise and uh, had success. So someone had to take it on the chin a bit, and it was us. But in the long long uh, long aspect of it, everything worked out successful for Flint, and they're doing well again this year. So uh, I'm proud of them, and, yeah, it's good. You, you talked about – kind of keeping things fun um, when it is tough to go to the rink like that. And obviously it's one of those things like if you can keep it fun um, in that kind of a season when you are winning 14, 15, 16 games and that's it. If you can keep it fun then, then it's kind of like what makes it easier to keep it fun when things are going well. So what kind of things did you and the coaching staff and even some of the leadership group um, on the team, what kind of stuff did you guys do to keep it fun? Um, just like, like things can get stale around the rink. You come to the rink every single day. It doesn't matter what team you're coaching, whether be a winning team or not a winning team um just that you got to keep keep the compete level like the smiles on the face you got to have guys coming to work every single day enjoying their jobs so just little things like even just putting music on a practice is a big deal like sometimes a tempo all week you can be doing drills and stuff and it just kind of drags on and on and on just putting on simple music on practice kind of up the compete level um the pace of practice um other things just just like even rest, like giving a guy a day off is a big deal to him. So um, you might think that, yeah, we should be on the ice every single day, but sometimes it's okay to, to be at home or get him into the rink, stretch, watch video, change it up, maybe get him on the ice, play a game. I know like even the OHL, we, had, we did like ice cream social. It was like a competitive three-on-three game, split them up and the winner gets ice cream. So you'd never, uh, you'd never think that older guys or even pros, they would uh, how, how hard they'd battle for ice cream. So <laughs> I think everybody knows that they'd battle for ice cream. But it's, uh, it's one of those things you've got to think outside the box. There's different team building stuff that, that you can find online. And there's, there's a million different things you can do. I know in Flint the one year um, we had, uh, we actually brought in uh, like a PlayStation truck. It was like a truck with uh, all the PlayStations in it. So then we set up uh, like an NHL 2019 tournament for the guys. Guys are big gamers and stuff. So yeah. we uh, it was like six screens or something like that, and it was fun. We all played like a kind of a NCAA uh, March Madness type style. So it was good, and guys get on teams, and you can hear them yelling at each other, and it was good, and they didn't even know they were bonding. So it was fun. Do you remember? Do you remember who was the best or who won the tournament? Um, I think Hunter Holmes did. He's a kid that plays in the Quebec League now for the Quebec Ramparts. But I'm pretty sure Hunter Holmes and maybe Ty Delandria. He's a guy that played in. Uh, he plays for Texas Stars and Dallas Stars. So, um, but I'm not 100 percent sure who won that. But I'm sure Jake Durham, if he ever watched this, he'd claim that he won that. So, did you did you give it a shot? Did you hop in at all? Oh yeah, I was playing for sure. I I don't even know who I was playing with, but I'm not very good at video games anymore. So. It's uh, one of those things you just kind of skate around, play dirty, and check Hope something good and, happens. Yeah, make them, uh, <laughs> make them all mad. <laughs> do, do you think um, if, if we were to bring uh, the, the PlayStation to the rink one day uh, after practice, who do you think would, uh, would kind of run things that way? I think Danny Martin's the guy on the team that's the gamer kind of. I don't know what games he plays, but, um, yeah, it could be something down the future that we might uh, look into here if we can – get a couple playstations maybe and set them up and we can uh draw up a couple games here so absolutely and uh maybe we can put a little wager on there for the boys there there might even be a way to hook it up to the video board yeah top. the fun part about <laughs> playing the playstation games is you can be yourself so like the ohl has they're on the game so I they can like you can be the flint firebird so you could set it up so you know what i mean so guys are yelling at each other and they're playing their own character, yelling at their line mate <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. on the TV and stuff. And you know how it is. So it gets it gets pretty fun that way. So we may have to do that. We may have to make some uh, make some FPHL rosters. Yeah, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Throw that up on the video board. That would be all right. Let's see. We're coming up with good ideas on a Tuesday morning. That's right. Um, so b before we go, um, Port here on this weekend. Uh, just some closing thoughts on that. Again, two teams in uh, in similar spots in the standings, kind of trending 
um, in different directions, though, it would seem, at least over the last weekend. Um, in summary, you know, how do you think uh, your team stacks up to, to the Prowlers? Oh, I think we stack up against any team. I think top to bottom, um, we've got a lot of veteran leadership, good players in this roster. So I'm excited to see our guys come out of the gate Thursday night and Friday. Just we've had some rest. We've got a chance to uh, kind of nag in injuries and stuff like that. So we've got a full roster. So it's going to be exciting, and I, I can't wait to get back on the ice. So it's one of those things. Uh, it's going to be a long travel going there and then coming back for Saturday night. But I think our guys are ready for it, and I think they're hungry, and I think you're going to see uh, a lot of success of the Thunderbirds. Coach, as always, thanks for the time. Good luck this weekend. Got a lot of good hockey uh, to look forward to. Um, that'll just about wrap it up for us here on the Labatt Coaches Show. Uh, we'll see you next time.